Take that information, eyewitness knowledge, and let's go back into John. I tell you, we're going to do a little bit of work from John tonight. Um, it's the best kind of work you can do. It's just reading and exploring the beauty of the Word. Go to John chapter 14. And I want to read a few verses. And I want to, there's just a couple of these thoughts in here that I want to get out that were stirring in my spirit today and yesterday as I was going over our Word. And some of it even is a little bit off the trail. But there's just some things that I felt compelled to speak into your lives from this Scripture uh, just to show you a couple things about the love of Jesus. John chapter 14, verse 25. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Peace. I leave with you. Gosh, I love this verse. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I am going away and I'm coming back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said I'm going to the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it comes that when it does come to pass, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you. For the ruler of this world is coming and he has nothing in me. But that the world may know that I love the Father. And as the Father gave me commandments, so I do. Arise and let us go from here. I want to bring a couple of things to light before I really hone in on the fact that Jesus just handed you his peace. I don't know if you caught that. This is an unbelievable moment in the scripture. Jesus grabbed his peace. That thing that made him cool. I don't mean socially cool. I mean cool under fire. That thing that made him, no matter where he was, he's a steady hand. He's a rock. And he grabs hold of that and he reaches across the aisle to his disciples and he says, my peace I give you. You have it. I'm, I'm out of here anyway, so you keep it for me while I'm gone. Now, I set, we set it up with of his fullness we have partaken. We set it up with, he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Because I wanted a blanket statement for you to know that Jesus really did give you some stuff. Let's don't go blanket anymore. Let's get specific. I want to show you some stuff he really gave you. Hint number one, peace. All right, you saw it there in the text. But before we go into the specifics of that, we just saw a couple of things that I've never heard preached in my life, and I don't know why, because I think we just cheated people out of an amazing sermon. Did you know when you love somebody, you rejoice at what they rejoice with? Jesus made an amazing statement in this passage. Reread it with me in verse 28. You heard me say to you, I'm going away and I'm coming back. If you loved me, and we love statements like this in the church. We go, if you love Jesus, you'd do everything Jesus said to do. You'd be doing this. And Jesus says, if you loved me, you would rejoice because I said I'm going to my father, before, for my father is greater than I. And I used to read that and think, why would Jesus expect that they would rejoice? This is a pretty fascinating thing about love. Jesus says, if you really loved me and who I am, you would be excited that I'm going to my father because I'm excited that I'm going to my father. And when you love somebody, you're excited about what they're excited about. You're excited that they're excited. You love it that they love it. And we spend so much time trying to get people to conform to our way of thinking about what they should do and shouldn't do that we can't even rejoice when they rejoice because we don't know if they should be rejoicing. And yet Jesus says, if you really loved me, you guys would be so excited that I'm going to my father because I love my dad. And I get to be one with my father. And you should rejoice that I get to be one. I think there's another reason he, wants, he knows they should rejoice. Because he has told them that he's going to give them a helper called the Holy Spirit. You see, he said, right now, you know because I'm talking to you. But I'm not going to be talking to you out loud forever. And you're going to need to remember the stuff I said. So I'm going to leave you the Holy Spirit to help you. 
so that everything I said will come back to you. And what you're going to remember, and this is one of those amazing things about Jesus, what you're going to remember is that Jesus, earlier in the book of John, said, whatever I see my Father do, I do. Whatever I hear my Father say, I say. And I've said this all over the world, and it's one of my favorite things to preach, is that Jesus was simply doing what he heard and saw his Father do. He was not making it up as he goes. He also was not omniscient. How many of you know omniscient means all-knowing? That God, How many of you believe God is omniscient? I do. I think God knows all things. Jesus was not. You always have to be careful when you say that because people freak out and think, oh, I knew there was something wrong with this, this, gospel, this message. No, Jesus had to grow. The Bible says in the book of Luke, he grew in wisdom and in favor with God and man. He actually vanishes from the age of 12 until he's a young adult because he has to go grow in wisdom. So everywhere Jesus went, he doesn't walk into rooms and go, I'm reading minds. I'm reading minds right now. This wasn't the ministry of Jesus. Jesus had one natural response to people, love them. That's what he taught his disciples. Your one first most response is love people, listen to the Father. Love people, pull them in, listen to daddy's heart. Dad's heart's beating somewhere in them. They're his product, they're his kids. Some of them are way out of the way. Some of them are slopping hogs. Some of them are serving dad from the field and not at the party. But pull them in and love them, and then do what the Father says to do. And this is why, and someone commented on this as we came in tonight, that this had blessed them in a message they'd heard. But uh, uh, it's one of the things that, that impresses me the most about the earthly Jesus is that Jesus was so in tune with the Father that he was willing to do things or not do things that would absolutely wreck people's expectations. And so he might walk into a hospital in the book of John, the open-air hospital at Bethesda, having five porches, and there are people laying all over the ground sick, and he heals one guy. And if he were in the modern church, we'd be mad that he didn't heal all the guys because he's God, and he has the power. And by gosh, he ought to heal everybody. But he only listened to the Father. He didn't worry about what man said. He walked over to a man who'd been infirm for 38 years, and he healed him, and he said, take up your bed and go home. And the guy did, and he walked out and didn't heal one more person in the ER. And it's unfathomable that he would do that, but he was listening to Daddy's heartbeat. For some reason that day, that's exactly what dad wanted to do. And Jesus was not intimidated by what people thought of him or what people didn't think of him or what they expected out of him. It's the perfect place for us to be, to get to that place where just follow his voice. And so Jesus is saying, whatever dad says, that's exactly what I'm going to do. And that's why the end of that chapter, look at 31. The world may know that I love the father. And as the father gave me commandment, so I do. Arise, let's go from here. Guys, I'm going because dad said go. Go. 